there should be an earnestness about these broadcasts yeah. because you're telling us football is important <clears throat> and clearly football is important to a lot of people. And if you're going to turn it into the banter hour, mm. ultimately, there are podcasts out there for that. And 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 You don't want it to be too stuffy, though. You don't. And I guess that's why I said there's a balance to be struck. Um, Fortis Leo uh, asks, has the trend of quote-unquote club representatives that is prevalent in modern TV coverage ruined it? (laughs) The likes of Gary Neville, Stephen Manaman and Jamie Carragher in particular, they appear to be unable to speak objectively about the clubs or their rivals. I don't expect them to be entirely unbiased, but they should be reasonably objective and instead they've simply become unpleasant to listen to. They are unable to professionally separate themselves from being supporters. I personally find it childish and embarrassing, (laughs) not entertaining. In contrast, Roy Keane does seem to be able to separate his frustration with a lack of standards at Man United and give fair criticism. What are your guys' thoughts? Some big swings from Fortis Leo there. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, it's, not a keen though. No, it's, it's frame. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Coward. He knows. He's it's, good though. I really like him. Yeah. Oh yeah. What? What? The tough one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's phrased combatively, isn't it? Yeah. It is. yeah but but I think the overall uh, kind of crux of the question is clear, we, mm-hmm. and we don't want to spend our time, you know, mm-hmm. tearing other people's houses down because that doesn't build us a house. But I think it's an interesting. <laughs> I do think it's an interesting topic. Before I get your answers on it, a bit of extra kind of. Um, context Mm. which may be helpful there appears to be now a load of different vehicles that a lot of these pundits have whether it be podcast other shows whatever it may be and I think I would agree with Fortis Leo that the line appears to have been blurred as to what you're there for when you're punditing on the game itself and I think it's important to, Mm. to make clear I think he means the games themselves. I don't think he means other entertainment magazine shows because sure. they've kind of always yeah, been there. Yeah, there's yeah. more of them now because it's podcasting. But in terms of the, po- the, um, the, the the broadcast of the games themselves, it is interesting. And I would also add that Gavin Cooney, who's a writer that I really enjoy reading, who writes a lot about football, Irish guy, uh, he talked about it the other day, earlier this week, on, a, on, a, on, a, on an article which was entitled, I won't read the whole thing, but the title of the article was something like, there's never been more punditry than there is now And it's never been so bad. And he basically made all these points about why are we expecting to have to listen to this kind of banter hour around the broadcast themselves when actually people are there for kind of quite earnest, insightful, possibly punditry. And for example, these guys that that Fortis Leo has listed are capable of getting this right. Because, for example, Monday Night Football is brilliant. That does a brilliant job of doing that. So anyway, that's the context. Over to you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would say uh, that, that an interesting point within that um, is about how they can't, uh, how they're sort of unable to speak objectively about the, both their clubs and their rivals. Now, I don't really have a problem with Gary Neville openly supporting Man United in a broadcast because, of course, of course, you he know, does. You know, it's ridiculous yeah. to expect yeah. him to 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 uh, um, be objective and neutral about that. As the same with Carragher and McManaman. I think, as somebody with a dog in the fight. It's when they're sort of less objective about their rivals that is frustrating. It feels like sometimes if you're watching an Arsenal game, Gary Neville's doing the commentary. It's like there's someone hoping they will fail. But do you honestly think moment. that? Do you honestly it's, think it's that? how it feels. That it's, may not be correct. Because that's imperceptible course, that's, to me as a, as a non Well, yeah. I, I agree with you, Luke. I, I, I don't really pick up on that as strongly. So I'll, I'll give you an example. And perhaps this is petty and that there's plenty oh, of examples. In case I'm, I'm interested. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There'll be plenty of examples of, of, of Neville praising Arsenal and, and essentially doing his job in a, in a, in a, a professional in an objective way but he doubled down on something recently that, that made me think yeah, is, is, is this a, a sort of leftover from the rivalry between them in, in, the, in the good old days shall we say <laughs> um, <laughs> a few seasons ago um, when Arsenal brought in, in Ramsdale uh, Ben White a few other players the season before they signed Zinchenko and, and, um, mm-hmm. and Jesus um, he was saying that, oh, there's no plan at Arsenal it's hard to see what they're doing and the plan was very very clear they yeah. were tightening certain areas like making the squad younger mm-hmm. like, it was very very obvious that this was the beginning of the path that, that, that Arsenal were on now and you didn't need to be an Arsenal support to, to, to see that mm-hmm. and he was questioned and challenged on it recently and he doubled down on it and he sort of he, he stuck to his guns on it it's but like, that's but that's so, so i could say that that's his character though yeah sure. to double down it's, it'd be unlikely especially on perhaps twitter if it was on there or x should yeah. i say yeah you should um, say it. yeah 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 rest in peace twitter um that uh that he's going to do that um also 
like a pundit can just get something wrong. Yeah. I mean, they are. He's going to know more about Manchester United, of course. Sure. Of course he is. Um, but just get off his back, Jim. There is. I don't know. There is a sense, and it's not just with Arsenal. Sorry, it's with, with Liverpool as well. That he kind of. Um, Again, maybe it's me um, kind of reacting to the emotional uh-huh. state that you get into when you're watching a big game and yeah. having somebody who feels like a detractor being the person explaining it in front of you. Yeah. But it it does feel like there is a difference in the way that he speaks about certain teams. Never in particular. I, I think, weirdly I think enough... As well, I think that's probably inevitable. Though. But... Well, this is part of it as well, isn't it? Like from, from the outside looking in, I don't have a Premier League team, right? And I don't none, none of my the probably won't for a while. As well. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought yeah. so. And none of the teams they talk about are anything that I've got anything to do with. So more objective, I guess. Like I would just say, like one of two things. One is when I think of the harshest things that Gary Neville said in recent years that I can remember, they've actually been about the Glazers and about Man United. Sure. Mm-hmm. The second point I'd make is that if we tackle this question in this way, it's going to be impossible to get to the bottom of it because the people who are making the accusations are also, by their very nature, sure. completely biased. Yeah. It doesn't mean you're not a reasonable person. Jim, you've always been pretty even-handed. Like, you're, a pretty, you're a pretty chill guy generally. So, mm. But there is an inherent bias there. Mm. So what I'd be more interested in... So, so I, I don't, I don't well, actually... So do you want to pick up? Well, I was just going to say, perhaps le- leading into your point, is nothing um, lives in a vacuum, does it? We're all um, susceptible to everything going on in the media and society, blah, 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 without being too philosophical about it. And I think with pundits, you know, you see the explosion of fan media and just podcasters. But I think they've been massively influenced by that. Of course they have, and that's the point I'm saying. Yeah. If they were to still sound like they were broadcasting in, say, the 90s or whatever... Then I think that was you could you could definitely say it's perhaps less entertaining. It's it was, a bit dry. It was ivory tower stuff then, though. It yeah. was, and and you know I, I don't think we want to return to that. It's never going to be perfect, and you know I would you know one of the shows that's quite popular in, in the US and we see a lot of the clips here is um, with um, Carragher, uh, Henri, the and CBS coverage CBS. of the Champions it's League. The CBS, yeah. exactly. Kate Abdo, yeah. You would think yeah. that Jamie Carragher was twins based on what what you see on Monday yeah. Night Football and on that show. Yeah, and 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 people. I love that, but that's gone like the opposite end of that. Like sort of very pally and, and almost like a podcast doing live broadcast at the yeah, games, yeah, if, if yeah, you like. Yeah, 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 yeah. And some people like it, some people some people don't. Um, don't underestimate what the producers are, are egging people on sure. to of do. Course. I mean, look at the, and the great example of that was last season's Champions League final. Jolie and Lescott, they would basically say, oh, are you feeling nervous now? Like, you're a Man City fan, Jolie, where, you know, we hear he's more of a Wolves fan. But you play, you must be thinking, you must be thinking that. So, and that so, to me is like... So Gavin Cooper Cooney, Gavin Cooney in his piece highlighted that as the kind of nadir of it. But I don't, I don't, did he, right? I don't yeah. blame Jolien Lescott for that. But, 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 no. but, but, you know, but I of course, he, he is therefore going to be pressured to sort of think that. And also, if you're on TV or if you're doing something, you will have your shtick. I mean, Roy Keane had this to, to take um, Fortis Slayer's um, uh, mention of Roy Keane. Roy Keane was on the TV when he first came on and he, uh, you know, we all know what Roy Keane's like or what he was like as a player and, and what we, have a bit of an insight on what he's like as a bloke as well. Um, certainly when when punditing. And and he's like, oh, he's the angry guy. And you kind of get typecast. And you it's this bit of self-fulfilling prophecy, you could say. And you kind of, oh, that's my stick. That's what I go to. Now, I think Keane's kind of gone through that now. And perhaps out the other side. I think someone like Michael Richards has got a bit stuck as, oh, I'm the guy who's just just here for the banter and, and the laughs. And that's the point. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, again, I'm not necessarily blaming Richards for that. But I think... There is that, you know. If, if it would happen to us, you know, you have to kind of battle against it. But 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 here's the thing: I don't personally mind the club biases too much. Perhaps because I don't have a dog in the fight, and perhaps because I'm able to, mm-hmm. you know, be a bit more objective and and I know a little bit about broadcasting, so I kind of understand how it goes. And I think as long as the presenter is strong enough to hold them to account and ask the right kind of questions, and it doesn't get too ridiculous, mm-hmm. I actually think it's fine. I actually think it'll be pretty... You'd be careful what you wish for on that front, because if you've got people that. who had no interest whatsoever, it'd be boring, mm. right? But there is a balance that needs to be struck between entertainment, analysis, and serious sport coverage mm-hmm. that I think needs to be acknowledged. And I think the broadcasts around the games themselves have probably gone perhaps too far mm-hmm. in the entertainment direction. Because well, they want authenticity, because that's all the thing that... But they also want, like, social media clicks. Yeah, of yeah, course, yeah, yeah. yeah well, that's yeah. An, that is a huge, huge part and, of the and, ecosystem of it that has to be taken into account. But so are podcasts. Oh, indeed. And podcasts yeah. have, affected, have affected this as well. There are pl- my point is just this. In, in a nutshell, my point is this. There are plenty of places out there to find entertainment around sport if you want it, but pundits on broadcasts of the games mm. should probably at least try and remember why they're there. <laughs> like there's, there's been instances this season where it's just become almost 
a giggle hour mm -hmm. around a Premier League game, which is confusing to the viewer. And what the producers don't understand why it's confusing is because normally games, particularly towards the end of the season, start off with some massive montage about how disastrous it would be if Sheffield United were to be relegated or, uh -huh. you know, the Premier League's the, the golden promised land and if you drop out of it, it's the worst thing in the world. That's very much their angle. Mm -hmm. And then bang, there's a gag from Alan Shearer. Do you know what I mean? It's like, or a gag from Michael Richards and Theo Walcott or, you know, and I think they lean too much into the entertainment side of it when it can be just as entertaining without being quote unquote light entertainment mm -hmm. and without being, you know, Michael Parkinson on a yeah. Saturday night with Rod Hull and Emu or whatever. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it, 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 you're there to provide an insight first and foremost in the experience you've got. And I actually think Roy Keane does that very well. I do. I yeah. think he's very basic on one level because I don't think he wants to get involved in the tactics. You're not going to see him moving things around a board. Mm. But you are going to hear honesty and authenticity. Mm. And I think that's important. And the spectre at the feast of this whole debate here is that Sky Sports specifically know they can do this because they do it on Monday Night Football. Yeah. And well, they have a lot fine. more room well, on I Monday Night Football. Think that, but you could still have the tone. You could have the tone. The modern pundit has a lot to do, really, right? You have to be a serious analyst. If you, the, the top people have to have that in their locker as well and have to do a lot of different things. But the, the question was, has the trend of club representatives that is prevalent in modern TV coverage ruined it? Now, I don't think it has. I, I, I think the answer to that is no, personally. I, don't, I, th I think it's no, but there are points where... I understand why the question's being posed. Another great example, and I felt really sorry for Gary Neville when this was happening, but the when, they, when United were beaten 7-0 at mm. Anfield last season and... The coverage afterwards was as as sort of bigger part of the story as the game. Yeah, because he's just getting pelters from Carragher yeah. and from Keane as well, sort of sort of indirectly. But he kept, you know, mm -hmm. his shots kept ricocheting off Keane and back into <laughs> him. And he, he said, "Oh, what, like goodbye from Liverpool fan TV or whatever, whatever yeah. it was at the end." And it was quite unedifying. I understand why I never would have felt like that in a situation like that because that is like like the stuff of nightmares to have mm -hmm. to justify that on TV. But just watching it made me feel a bit uncomfortable yeah. it was all it was too heated and too yeah. too uh, like emotionally kind of aggressive almost did you, I, I, I think we can do better than that did you like it though when England were 3-0 up against Denmark at half time in the World Cup in 2002 and uh, Ian Wright was giggling and pointing at Peter Schmeichel in the studio because I did <laughs> <laughs> what, what a niche throwback that is that, that, people love you for that you know yeah. that. there's not a single person for, in the UK that, among many reasons there's not there's not a single person in the UK that's going to have um, remembered that like you did there. Not but, even but, but, but I think in summary, I think the answer is no. I think the club representative things is, 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 um, mm. is inevitable and it's always going to happen and you've got to be careful what you wish for, as I said. But I do also think the, Im the these broadcasts now are a serious danger of being, without being too po-faced about it and too mm. earnest. There should be an earnestness about these broadcasts yeah. because you're telling us football is important. <clears throat> and clearly football is important to a lot of people. And if you're going to turn it into the banter hour, mm. ultimately, there are podcasts out there for that. And 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 You don't want it to be too stuffy, though. You don't. And I guess that's why I said there's a balance to be struck. But another great example before, before presumably we move on. I mean, just last week, I think, on either Match of the Day or Match of the Day 2, mm. the... The lineup was Lineker, Richards, and Shearer. Mm -hmm. And it really just became an extension of their podcast. Yeah. Do you want that on Match of the Day? Definitely not. Is that not. what Match of the Day Definitely is? Definitely not. No, exactly. Mm. So so you've got to um uh, that's not to dig dig the, dig out the podcast specifically. But I mean you can do that if you want. I don't think it's very good, right. but that's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is that there's this is a different platform for it, a different environment for it, and Indeed. a different audience for it, crucially. Yeah. So there's a definitely a balance to be struck. We can't just be filling the airtime with millions and millions of programs where everything is geared towards social media clips. Like, basically, the whole of Saturday morning broadcasting on Sky Sports is that now yeah. for people who don't really watch TV because they're young and they watch YouTube and use social media and all the rest of it. So, great question, great debate. It's nice for us to be sat a little bit outside of it to be able to give our kind of mm. honest opinions mm -hmm. because I think you don't get an awful lot of that. So, mm. hopefully, we've done that. Hopefully, we have. And hopefully, we'll see uh, more of Noel Gallagher as a pundit as well. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jim, you've got the uh, next question. I do. Chris has got an email. Chris has sent an email. I have it in my hand here. Old school. After Xabi Alonso's decision to stay at Leverkusen, or Leicesterkusen, as your key to sport calls them, he <laughs> is one of the century's greatest wits. Uh, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this should he stay, should he go situation, and if there are any examples that spring to mind of players or managers who miss their moment for a big move. Now, my thoughts on this are I'm delighted that he's staying at Leverkusen. I don't think he'll be at Leverkusen for, for more than possibly two seasons, maybe even one season. But he's, In total? He's, in, yeah, I think After the, he's yeah. taken them to the Champions League. He's got a chance to establish them in a league um, where there is room for that, let's be honest. Mm. Um, and I'm delighted to see that he's, that he's 
going to stick around and try and do that. And that Harry Kane may not win a trophy they, at well, Bayern Munich. The, 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 I do mean, you care about that? Uh, not really. It's no. quite funny. Though, it, it? It's funny if it happens this season. Um, but I think, uh, you know, he deserves I, a trophy, doesn't he? Come on. Yeah. But with England. with Sure. People always forget as well, it's never mentioned this because of all the rhetoric around Alonso, is that they've still got a chance of winning the Europa League as well. They do. Absolutely. They do yeah. and for the record, by the way, I really hope Harry Kane wins a trophy. Oh, it means At club be... level, it's ridiculous. And also, actually, but that's not the debate. But here. for Leverkusen as well, mm. there is a chance here to, to a point, banish the, the ghost of Neverkusen, yes. where they were on for a treble, which the treble, the treble, because it included the Champions League, with like something like, was it 10 days to go or something like that? And it they all, lost all. all collapsed. Yeah. They won nothing. They did lose the Champions League final to Real Madrid. They at, did. At Hamden Park. That's yes. right. That's a Dan Dan with that famous yeah, volley, yes. Right. Um, so that would be great for, uh, for for them, but obviously that's not the question that's being asked. Yeah. Yet. I suppose within the question is, is the possibility that Alonso might come to regret this, right? And I think we can all yeah. look at him and think it's very clear and obvious that mm. he's going to become one of the sort of top level elite managers for years to come. Yeah. Maybe that won't be the case. Uh-huh. I suspect that it's impossible to fluke this sort of season and that actually mm. Alonso's stock will remain high. They'll keep achieving things. And also, if they win a treble this season or even if he just wins a double, a double even if they just win the league, if they stay unbeaten, there's, there's a, a lot of things here. He'll have a lot of credit in the bank even if next season isn't There's the another angle to this, Jim, though, that, that people I don't think have, have said, um, but maybe they've thought it, is let's say that he has two or three seasons at Bayer Leverkusen and is considered one of their best managers of all time and mm-hmm. so on and so forth and then and then he was to move and 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 go away well <laughs> what a great two or three years Xavi Alonso can say well actually when i started the Bundesliga season as Bayer Leverkusen coach in my second season there and we defended our title yeah that was a great honor and i loved it yeah, he, he, the feeling he has at Bayer Leverkusen now, he will not get at another club mm, because yeah. he has created this. He has created them as on the brink of German champions. If he goes to Real Madrid, he's at Real Madrid, and it's a circus, and it's a huge thing, and it's far bigger than him. It's far bigger. Of course, he can create a, a, a great team, and he can do he could do great things with them. Same at Liverpool, same at Bayern. If he goes, because obviously he played for those those three sides. What he's got now at Bayer Leverkusen, I don't think he'll have again. In his career, it's almost the kind of because he can't basically. No, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like the sort of the indie band who play the kind of slightly smaller venues. Yeah. That feeling that you get playing yeah. them in the, in the, the, a sort of close knit community, and then oh, actually, the second album or third album catapulted us into stadiums. You take that. Like when Ramble went from the Bloomsbury Theatre exactly. to the Shepherd's Bush Empire. Damn right. Yeah. There you go. We replicate. played Empires, Hackney, <laughs> uh, as well. We've done. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah. Careful. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, uh, I, and and so. It's great that he's staying, and actually, to kind of, it's not a case of prolonging that. It's 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 a case of no, I've built this, and I want to see how far mm. I can go with this. Sure, and I think that's totally. It, it, it's not as if that by because he took them over, they were they were going to be relegated. He got them out of trouble, and they finished a respectable fifth or something. They qualified for the Europa. And, oh, you're going to stick around for the Europa League next season? Yeah, no, this what he's doing here. There'll be a Champions League side next season, and he's going to lead them into that. It's superb. Whereas if if he did go to Bayern, it, in terms of league position, it'd be stepped down. And oddly, the Liverpool thing as well is interesting because the cynical side of it is that why would you want to go into Liverpool after Klopp? Yeah, as well. That's a really high stakes move. The as only well. the only counter argument to that is that they've got a very good young squad and young players who, yes, they've they've been schooled in the Klopp way a bit, but they're still there for yeah. the, the molding, if, if if you like. But the, but the way he's he, he's managed by Leverkusen this season suggests, as Jim's saying, is this will last. This is mm-hmm. this is not a case this of is, it's a project isn't it it's yeah not a one-off. I- I- exactly uh, but should we perhaps look at the other part of the yeah, question why here, not? where um uh, chris was asking other examples that spring to mind of, of players and managers who missed their moment or, or or missed an opportunity maybe for for a big move gerard to chelsea lol i mean you know it is one <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of people would take issue with that though, wouldn't they? yeah i i was sort of thinking along the lines of players who were the best player at their club or the, or the most sort of heralded player at their club and could have Moved on to a, a, a bigger well, team. Well, Matt is the obvious one. Yeah. Isn't Spurs, Spurs move, wasn't it? 
Yeah, well, there was, there was always talk of Man United as well, but don't know how true that he, was. He could have, let's be honest. He, he Shearer could, could have gone to United as well. Shearer, I mean, yeah, but the, I, I'm reluctant to kind of say that because... Well, Man United are a bigger club in Newcastle. True, but yeah. I, yeah, but I, it's because I think the, the I understand Marcus's reticence there, and sorry to sort of jump in mm. over you, but I think it's... Shearer won the Premier League with Blackburn, and then he, he then went and became a club legend at his local club. Like sure. that, that that means something. But he could, it, it means a lot to him, and he said very many, many times he doesn't regret his decision. Well, I believe him. Better to have failed Jordan. at something that you love doing. But, but, I don't think, but, but he, he, I believe him when he says he doesn't regret it. No, he, I do as well. Yeah, but he could have been a part of a, the arguably the greatest legacy in but club you, football history look at in, some, in England. Yeah. If, you, if you look at some players, I mean, this, this is not an example, but say if like Gabriel Batistuta had stayed at Fiorentina and he hadn't have won Serie A and whatnot, he then goes to Roma and wins it. Yeah. It's, it's that type of player. And, and, and Marek Hamzik at Napoli yeah. is, is one who could have made, I'm sure he could have gone to a bigger side but loved playing at the club he's a club legend and they love him for that he's a funny one Hamjik isn't he I think part of it is like really really big standout players mm-hmm. sometimes um, are um, their character is a big part of that and how mm. how much they stand out on a football pitch and Hamjik is one of those yeah. there's a sense that like this guy feels like he's inevitably going to be a really memorable uh-huh. sort of iconic player and, for, and, a, for a huge club and people's priorities can get can be different can't they mm. you have to have a huge amount of ambition yeah. clearly to rise to the top of the mm. game but then after that your ambitions are some people are just dead set on winning some people are dead set on breaking scoring records some people are dead set on being legends at clubs like you know some people like where they live yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Family reasons, that yeah. kind of stuff as well. But if you look at Paul Scholes, for example, it's different slightly because the United are you know, the biggest club around anyway. But he was like, well, I never really wanted mm. to go anywhere else. And, mm. and Jamie Carragher says the same. They always joke, don't they? But they are Going back huge... to question number one, they're always joking about True, whether Carragher had the trophies. interest. But they won trophies where they were. I think that's the difference. I think that yeah. that's what you're kind of drilling down on here. It's why Harry Kane you know, moves to Bayern. If Spurs were winning trophies or, or had won, even, even had won one trophy when he was there, I think he might have stayed. Mm. But, but you know, he, he goes on um, that hunt for silverware, which is totally understandable. Is there an argument that Kane himself should be an answer here that he could if he'd moved say three years ago he'd have probably cleaned up somewhere well yeah maybe but I in mean, three years time he may have cleaned up yeah true but uh, but I mean looking at players again who who, who you know could have gone elsewhere I mean Fulham's uh, Breda Hangeland was linked with Arsenal but he just loved playing for Fulham yeah, now, he yeah, would then yeah. subsequently go to say Crystal Palace and people might think oh, I don't remember him or why he'd been but it's, it's the player who has maybe had a really good season or two seasons now I'm not talking about club legends I just mm. had that but um, a, a player who it's it's almost like now's the time to cash in kind of thing. Yeah, so there, there's a, the Ports, Portsmouth had a player called Alan Knight yeah. who was oh, a yeah. legendary goalkeeper there and he played for Portsmouth his whole career and he's still an ambassador for the club now and uh, he um, he was really, for at least a few years, was by, you know, the best goalkeeper outside the top flight and yeah. got a lot of interest. But he he never, he never wanted to move. And then when I was at his testimonial, he mm. said, oh, um, he did a big speech saying, oh yeah, I just never really wanted to. Um, I remember telling you guys about it because someone shouted out, no one wanted you, and everyone laughed, and I felt really bad for him because it was his testimony, yeah, not that, yours, mate. That is quite poor. Um, I, I would even throw in, um, if you're talking about goalkeepers, I mean, Kevin Pressman was a good goalkeeper. There was, there was interest in, in a few other uh, clubs. This is the only podcast he's getting a mention on this weekend? I hope not. I hope there's a, there's a best penalties ever scored podcast, Yeah, and he's mentioned in it. But um, perhaps one that everybody knows and remembers, Jamie Vardy. We yeah. talk about Shearer, you know, he'd won the Premier League yeah. and then, you know, Vardy had won the Premier Arsenal, League and there was the Arsenal chat. And he, and he did seriously look at that. He was looking at schools in the area reportedly. He was looking at, uh, you know, moving and, and people... He would have burnt that club to I, the ground. I cannot see any scenario where that wouldn't have been a disaster. Yeah, I, it's such a strange <laughs> one when you think about it. And I know he would then win the FA Cup with Leicester. Yeah. So there was another big trophy there. And and again, I'm glad he obviously played Champions League football with Leicester. It's, it's an incredible story. Um, but going to Arsenal... That is a bigger club, you know. The the, the chance yep. of improving them and seeing yeah. what they could do doesn't always work, though, does it? Well, it doesn't work, and and I'm all intrigued by that. That those who you think ah oh, maybe they should have stayed, you could yeah. say that about yeah. Michael Owen. Yeah. And Actually, Liverpool. you know, a player I think of quite often um, in that scenario, Francis Jeffers. Like he made he made that leap to Arsenal. Yeah, had a really really good season for Everton. Was was prolific for the England under 21s as well. Like looked mm-hmm. like he was going to have a big future. It didn't quite work out for him at Arsenal. He yeah. just couldn't force his way into the into the team. I think he had some injury problems as well. And then he he just never recaptured the form that got him the move in the first place at any yeah. other club. Well, as I said, you know, before, loads of Chelsea before, before he jumped in. Michael Owen, I would say, when he left Liverpool to go to Real Madrid. Now he said he wanted to go to Real Madrid. How can you turn down that move? 
the following season, Liverpool win the Champions League without yeah. him. And then when he came back to England from Real Madrid, it was never the same. Because he went to Newcastle. Well, yeah. And, then, and, and from then, it was all a bit bitty. I know he played a little bit more for England. But, you know, again, would he have been better off staying at Liverpool? Possibly. Yeah. And lo- loads of Chelsea players. I mean, Chelsea, mm. went player, Chelsea went through that phase now of just signing any player yeah. who had a good Premier League season for a fashionable lot, club. Yeah. Mm. And then a lot of them failed to make an impact, didn't they? Your Stephen Sidwell's of this yeah. world, of this Scott world. Scott Parker suffered from that a little bit as yeah. well. Sean thought, Wright Phillips. Uh-huh. Yeah. Danny Drinkwater. Yeah. Drinkwater's a great example. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. All right, let's finish with uh, this question from Carl on Instagram. With uh, Manchester City having a documentary out, which season for which club would you most like to have seen a documentary made for? Good question. It is a good question. I think um, before I give you my answer, I would just like to say that I find those quite sanitised, PR exercise documentaries around big clubs, quite boring. Well, so you, it's your it's your question. You can have a decision. No, but I, I mean the reason for the question being asked is because of the Man City treble thing, and I think mm. really we have to kind of distinguish between what a documentary actually is and what an extended Fine. kind of glamorised PR exercise okay, is. Okay, okay. It's about it's much more about yeah. furthering their appeal around the world than it is about giving you a general like a genuine documentary. Sure, you're and right. They, to and they chuck they chuck a few little kind of right. fillets in there for you to. But give Carl a bit of entertainment on a Saturday. Well, the one I would like mm. is having said what I've just said. If you want warts and all, Harry Redknapp at Portsmouth. No, legally that would be impossible. <laughs> it would just be impossible. But be a um, trailer. Yeah, it would. It's like, when's it coming out? No, that was it. That was our whole thing. <laughs> yeah. That's all we could get cleared. Given that there are him and people like Paul Mercer are on the Alpha Dinner circuit talking about stuff that should just never have happened. Yeah, uh, it's it's probably not gonna, never going to see the light of day. But um, back before football was quite so sanitised, mm. and I believe there is one coming later this year about this. Uh, anyway, uh, the 1999 May United season would be interesting. Would be. Um, there's, that's being made I'm not, unless I've completely missed it and it's come out already I don't think it has it's been listed as being out this year so um, that would be pr- pretty interesting but the ones I like in general the most interesting ones really is stuff about hardship it's stuff about you know genuine interesting stuff like Sunderland Till I Die the five year plan the QPR one I think it's called the five year plan um, the club for a fiver yeah, yeah. Th- that stuff is the actual interest that you don't see sure. is, the, is the one but for me it would, uh, having said all that, and perhaps contradicting myself, um, the 1999 May United season was so formative for me, even though I'm not a May United fan, it was just so massive, and I was at quite an impressionable age, and I just loved that season. I'd be really interested in seeing um, behind the scenes how it, how it happened and what went on. Mm-hmm. I think, that, yeah, the thing with the all or nothing things is, here's what happened in the season you just watched, where what you really, mm. really want is insight into the, to the story of something massive. So s- something I would love to get an insight into, and, and again, because it's the human story here, is that season at Newcastle when they had the 12-point lead under Kevin Keegan. Like, yeah, well, good people one. joke about it, mm. and we, we, we all talk about the, you know, we're still fighting for that That would be thing. great. But to see a proper insight into how that all unfolded and what, what the happened. mood would have been like as yeah. the season completely goes. as well. Because you got, obviously you've you got the twin story of, of Ferguson's Man United mm. kind of breathing down their necks and all the all the mind games and that stuff to see a proper deep dive into that would be great yeah 90s football wasn't the sanitized either mm. you look at the pr but stuff, there'd still be loads of footage yeah quite you look at the pr stuff that they throw out around this latest man city one it's like jack Grealish has got a dog mm. you know yeah, and jack yeah. Grealish likes bovril you know jack Grealish this like that's all I mean, it but is you like they, that's jack the Grealish, here's loads of him yeah mm, yeah they probably can't use some of the other stuff though well, yeah, that's the that's real documentary. They should be using <laughs> Jack's it. forty-eight hours. That's what we want. <laughs> Jack's really uncovered. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, that would be quite good. I, I mean, uh, yeah, the, I know what you mean. If you, it's, it's that idea of really trying to capture a mood and a feeling at a football club, and 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 but it's just so difficult to do. Yeah. Even if you had access, all areas, and you do it, it's very difficult to kind of capture that. If I may be deeply immature, the Spurs look lasagna gate season. Just that week. It's, it all looks like it's going to go brilliantly, brilliantly, brilliantly. Oh, it's gone wrong. Why has it gone wrong? Really shittily. The final <laughs> episode is just a load of blokes shit in their pants. Mm-hmm. You'd sit through that. Yeah, I think I, think I would. <laughs> mm. Very popular in some parts of North London. Yeah. And, and East London. <laughs> Very specific Don't forget that they were involved as well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, What's what, yours? Um, well, I would have loved to have seen, you know, again, Axis All Areas, all that kind of stuff. Ancelotti at Milan when he had all those big players, you know, the sort of big yeah, scenes. Nice. Just because, because you know, with that, the stories of him arriving to, you know, training in a helicopter or that kind of stuff. Yeah. But there's such big, big names. I think 
The gesticulation I, in the dressing room. Yeah, Imagine. exactly. Just all those big players. I mean, to be honest with you, I know I know what you're saying about you want the hardships and all the rest of it. I, I wasn't that bothered by Sunderland until I died because a lot of people I didn't, I didn't know and stuff. And I know that's maybe not the spirit of it. But in terms of like, usually documentaries are made about sort of massive stuff going on. Not always, but 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 they can be. And, I, you know, Beckham's um, arrival at Real Madrid, you know, seeing all those players, the, the Galacticos, it doesn't have to be Beckham necessarily. Because maybe that's a bit too much, but just seeing all those players, like what are they like together? In that's the... so funny. You think you say that because I find I found I know you're not saying this, but the Beckham documentary I found quite boring. Yeah, I well, know. That's what I mean. I'm not talking about yeah. that. But the, the Sunderland Clyde Die thing I found fascinating, chiefly just because it was about more than just the club. It was about a decline of a of a city and about mm. how you know, the working classes have been left behind and how kind of unfair modern life is and how the economy actually works for so few people, all seen through a lens of a football club. Yeah. And then a that's, load that's of fair. charlatans come in and just make it almost like an episode of The Office. Well, okay, so, but like, okay, Blackburn Rovers League winning t- title season. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that a town like that. Mm. You know, it's just, it's, it's a, that is a proper moment in time. And there should be footage for that as well. Yeah. Or, yeah. or the season where Steve Keane knifed Sam Allardyce in the back and took his job. <laughs> Steve Keane. I King. would be equally be interested. <laughs> what an in era. Yeah. I forgot about that. How Man. Steve Keane not got a biopic about him there? <laughs> mm. Venkies. Yeah. You, are you, you, there'd, there'd be a good Blackburn documentary in there somewhere. You'd have to cover a long time very, very deftly. Yeah. With, yeah. Without putting you in the same bracket as Pete Donaldson, you do like to see a bit of um, chaos. chaos yeah. Maybe not tragedy, perhaps. I bet I think you would like um, a season of Derby County's 11 points Ooh. in the Premier League. <laughs> Paul Jewell, look, remember Imagine Paul, that. Paul Jewell had other priorities that season, didn't he? Come on. He did. He did. Yeah. Mm. Certainly some footage that could be spliced in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I think we should end there. Thank yeah. you very much for listening to the Football Ramble Mailbag, part of the ACAST Creator Network. We're back on Monday with a brand new Ramble. In the meantime, do follow us on X, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram at Football Ramble. And follow us on Spotify. Thank you, Luke. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Enjoy your weekends, everybody. Thank you for watching a clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Uh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an upload. A single upload. Don't miss out on the uploads. The uploads are in. <laughs>